Okay. Então, boa tarde a todos. Vamos dar início ao, ao colóquio, né? A gente, na verdade, está começando hoje o segundo ciclo dos colóquios interdisciplinares da física, né? Segundo ciclo porque o primeiro ciclo ocorreu no primeiro semestre do ano passado, né? Hoje estamos começando a segunda sessão de apresentações. Para quem não conhece esse evento, ele trata-se, na verdade, de um encontro semanal, né? normalmente ocorre às quartas-feiras, a partir das 2h40, que seria o horário de início, que por conta de, de alguns problemas hoje atrasou um pouco, e esse evento ele é organizado pelo NEPEF e NEPA, do IFPB Campo João Pessoa. Certo? O NEPEF e NEPA são núcleos de pesquisa né, do IFPB. O NEPEF é o Núcleo de Ensino e Pesquisa em Física e o NEPA, que é o Núcleo de Ensino e Pesquisa em Astronomia. Esse evento normalmente ocorre no Laboratório de Física do IFPB Campo João Pessoa. Né? Só que, por conta da pandemia, é, ele vai ficar ocorrendo por aqui no Google Meet. A partir dessa primeira apresentação, Todas as quartas-feiras, nesse horário, teremos esse encontro. É, o primeiro ciclo de colóquios surgiu com o intuito dos professores da instituição é, se conhecerem né, academicamente. Vocês estão me escutando? Sim. Sim. Yes. Yes. É, para que a gente também conseguisse definir as, as linhas de pesquisa do nosso grupo de pesquisa. Né? E assim também como a gente conseguisse estabelecer parcerias para trabalhos e projetos científicos. Nessa segunda versão, os colóquios agora vão ter um pouco mais de extensão. Porque, além de, de contar com a colaboração dos professores da própria instituição, ele também visa estender a oportunidade para a apresentação de pesquisadores externos, né? ampliando assim os horizontes das, das nossas discussões científicas. Então, hoje teremos a apresentação do professor doutor Fábio Ribeiro Gomes, né, recém-chegado no campo João Pessoa, que vai ter a oportunidade de se apresentar academicamente através do coloquio intitulado Topological Phases in Condensed Metal Physics, onde o mesmo terá em torno de 40 a 50 minutos para fazer a sua apresentação. Em seguida, será aberto para os participantes a possibilidade de fazer questionamentos ou comentários acerca da temática. Então, por opção do professor Fábio e acatamento da maioria dos integrantes do NEPEF, NEPA, a apresentação de hoje será de, na língua inglesa. No entanto, todas as intervenções dos participantes serão feitas e respondidas em português, tá? Isso é uma right. maneira de, é, daqueles que não estão tão familiarizados com a língua também conseguirem participar, tá ok? Então, a gente vai... Good. Permitir, no caso, a apresentação será em inglês, mas todas as intervenções, inclusive a apresentação que estou fazendo, serão feitas e respondidas em inglês. A todos um bom coloque, por favor, professor Flávio, Fábio, pode começar a sua apresentação. Eu estarei controlando o tempo e sinalizo para você, tá ok? Right. Pode ficar voltando. Professor Diego, thank you for your kind presentation and your kind dental invitation. Right, and uh, today, dear colleagues, I will talk to you about uh, one line of research that I'm carrying on since two years ago. It is it is about the topological phases in condensed matter physics, right? And uh, I hope that uh, during at the end of my presentation, you have a good qualitative over physics overview of these three pictures here, right? that are the, the main aspects of my presentations. In the first one, in this one, you can see the crystalline structure of the magnetic topological insulators, where, where, where a group of Stanford University realized the presence of axion insulator, of the dynamical axion. And this one here that you can see is the diamond lattice, uh, where I am carrying on our investigations along with Professor Francisco Geraldo. And this phase diagram, actually, you can find it in a paper published by two Japanese researchers. But in our investigations, we will perform more calculations in this phase here. 
This abbreviation stands for charred dense waves. This another one stands for spin dense waves. And this data here is the main point of our colloquium here, where I will show you that the presence of the theta term, which is a topological term, uh, gives rise the presence of the axion in some collective electronic interactions, right? And for those of you, many of you know this coast, this beautiful coast of Paraíba State, right? And this here, Gilbert, which is the older here, passed this whole, all his life here. This is the beautiful landscape of the Campus João Pessoa. Before introducing you to the condensed matter physics, let me show you a team of collaborators that I have made during the past years, right? Most of them are in our region, okay? Uh, the Dr. Luis, he is a mathematician. He is a postdoc in the Weizmann Institute of Science. Uh, Anderson is the experimental guy, right? He is a, he is a brilliant experimental physicist. Christ, Christian Bastos, he is a chemistry. Diogo Veloso, <laughs> we, 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 we are starting a good colla collaboration. Eduberto, he is a theoretical physicist. Francisco Geraldo is the guy who is collaborating with me in this work. Actually, he was the guy who introduced me to the particle physics. He, he took his PhD in physics here in UFPB, and he worked in the field of particle physics, and uh, he started to talk to me about the action particle and condensed matter. And uh, Washington Lima, he is also a theoretical physicist, uh, who works in UFP. Some of my last publications are here, and uh, I will show you some results that I am carrying on in this work with Professor Francisco Geraldo. So, the outline of, of my talk is the following. In the introduction, I will show you the daily life of a condensed matter theorist. What I want to do. We, we wish to want to we want to understand phases, their properties, how they appear, and how can we characterize them. In the sequence, I will talk about topological phases, just a few of them, because as I hope to show you, this is a world. Since the beginning of the investigations in this area, many things have been performed in the experimental and theoretical scenario. In the sequence, I will show you our experimental motivations on this line of magnetic topological insulators. And in the sequence, I will talk about our results. So the main point that uh, I wish I want to address here for you is this phrase that is very, very, very common. And, uh, Anyone who begin his studies in condensed matter physics will read this paper, this celebrated paper by P. W. Anderson, more is different. In this paper, he argues that even though you know precisely well the quantum mechanics of one electron, it doesn't mean that you can understand the collective behavior in condensed matter. You know the laws, you know the quantum mechanical laws of one electron, and you can describe it then. You know the particle physics. This is not a criticism to particle physics, but this is a way to show that the reductionism of particle physics is not the only answer about the nature aspects. In nature, it exhibits properties very deep in its understanding, like superconductivity, superfluidity, and other collective phenomena that you can't, you can't, no matter how clever you are, no matter how clever you are, you can't explain this kind of phenomena with the quantum mechanical theory of one electron. You must investigate deep fundamental laws in its, na in its nature, right? 
So this is what I'm going to talk about to you. And uh, in this first part, any one of you are hearing me well? I think so. So in this part here, this is P. W. Anderson. He is a. He was actually he was unfortunately he passed away last on March, I guess on March or April of this year he passed away, and uh, he he was an influential physicist in our generation, and he wrote that paper that I showed you more is different. He also wrote this good book, More and Different, with the same philosophical meaning of, of this paper, but with more news, right? And uh, here is the motivation because when I was doing these slides, when I was making them, I had in mind a young student, some young student. And uh, for a condensed matter physicist, this is a curious aspect. How can iron shed light if you hit it? How can we, how we can explain this one, this phenomenon? When a condensed matter physicist tries to explain this kind of phenomenon, we try to first analyze the wave quantum mechanic theory of the electrons in the iron. First of all, we ask ourselves how many electrons does iron have, and we try to understand how the electrons are distributed in this material. This is a some common picture that any young student see in chemistry books, right? But for a condensed matter physicist, this, is, this answer is not enough because we want to characterize the properties that happens when we heat iron and how it sheds its light. How can we understand this in a controllable experimental and theoretical scheme? In this, with this in mind, few, uh, condensed matter theorists and experimentalists too try to measure some physical quantities and by the relation of the data, they try to create, to build a model in a logical statement that you can, from first principles, explain this kind of phenomena here, right? Here, I show you some experimental data for this iron compound when, you, when we can control experimentally the thermal conductivity by the fraction of this compound here. And you can see that when you dope your system, you increase the thermal conductivity. So what is the work of a condensed matter physicist? You try to build a model to explain from first principles or another physical approach, why does this experimental data behave in this way, okay? This is our daily life. This is one aspect of our everyday life. In the sequence, what a condensed matter theorist do? We wish to construct phase diagrams and understand the properties of it of the phases of the of the matter. One point is this phase diagram, with, which is the water phase diagram, is very common. It's very common in high school physics and a condensed matter physicist try to understand clearly each aspect of this phase diagram. Why these lines has this form? What is the physical meaning behind these lines? And when, you, when we get in the phase, how can we understand, characterize its properties? For instance, a condensed matter theorist is very curious about why this line is stopped at this point. This point here is, is the so-called critical point. Condensed matter theorists, actually Nobel physicists, realizes that some uh, uh, response functions diverge at this point. And they created many theories to analyze the behavior of these physical quantities right 
at this point. And with this line, why this line don't stop? Why this line continue on? What is the physical mean behind this behavior? How can we understand it? Here, we have the matter in the phase called ice. There is just one kind of ice, or there are many kinds of ice. This kind of phase transition here, how can we classify it of first order, second order? And here, how can the liquid phase can go to the gas phase without cross this phase transition here? How can this be possible? Is there some physical, the physics here is different from the physics crossing this line? This is what the condensed matter theorist asked himself and the way that he tried to create models, mainly experiments to prove his ideas, right? And uh, this is our most common sub substance that we realize since we, we were child. And uh, in this time, we, we think that matter has just three phases, but this answer is not the correct one. If someone asks you how many phases the matter exhibits, you can say that many phases, many phases. Water in this parameter space, you see just you can characterize three phases. But even in the solid phase, the ice can be subdivided in another kind of ice. Because here in this region, with the pressure, with high pressure and low temperature, we have different kinds of ice. And here, the water in this region, it doesn't have the some characteristics of the liquid. In this region, the water is called supercritical water, right? And uh, there are many, many interesting articles of the water in this region. Even nowadays, there are many challenges to know about the characteristics of water in this region at high temperatures and at high pressures. In another context of the, oh, okay. In another context of the solids, right? We are used to see two kinds of electrical behaviors, a metallic one and the insulator. But how can we physically characterize these phases? Condensed matter theorists and experimentalists try to understand the behavior of the electrical resistance as a function of the temperature. And in general, in general, a metal is characterized by a decrease with temperature, right? While the insulator phase, when you decrease the temperature, you increase the electrical resistivity. But if you ask me, all the solids behaving this way? The answer is no. A few class of solids show exhibit this behavior, right? There are kind of solids that uh, are metallic at some range of temperature. After that, it increases its resistivity. Because of that, I am showing you this experimental data here of the vanadium dioxide to show this interesting behavior. If you look the resist the resistance here, when you decrease the temperature, you increase the resistivity, right? And what the one part of the condensed matter theorists do is to understand this kind of metal insulator transition at this region here, okay? So going on, as I told you, there are many kinds of phases. And uh, if you ask, there is one kind of insulator phase, the answer is no. Actually, there are many. Just to list a few of them, you can see that this 
first two kinds of insulators we are using to see every day, electrical insulator and thermal insulators. This one, bent insulators, magnetic insulators, quantum insulators, and so on, are not common to our everyday life, everyday life because of the parameter space. Here, this kind of phases, they coexist in our parameter space of pressure and temperature, which we live. This another one, they live in another region of the parameter space. And in particular, in our talk, in our colloquium here, I will talk about topological insulators, just some few of them. And during the next slides, you all see test books. Uh, as you know, test books, I like food. <laughs> it's, a, it's a matter of taste. I have listed here test books of my preference that I like so much during my investigations, right? So continuing, in the next part, I go to talk about uh, topological phase, some experimental and theoretical investigations. And during this part, I hope I would like to address the mention. How can we characterize a topological insulator by this cartoon here? And this another one here is about the history of the first known topological phases. First, some of you may know the, the bent theory. And in this theory, uh, it is stated that a bent insulator is characterized by a gap between the valence band and the conduction band. The new here is these two green lines. These two green lines are the characterization of a topological insulator. Uh, some of you might have heard that in a topological insulator, the bulk of the material is insulator and the surface of this material is a conductor. In other words, in a topological insulator, electrons at the surface can flow. I mean, you can detect a electrical current at the surface, while in the bulk of the material, you can't measure a electric a electrical current right so just to as some of you are, are new in this area all the investigations over the past 40 years in this area have raised many good prizes and uh, it was recognized in 2016 that these three guys made incredible contributions to the theory of topological phases in physics, okay? And here is the first known topological phase, the quantum Hall effect. All of you are familiar with the classical Hall effect when you apply a voltage at the corners of a material and uh, you apply also you apply a perpendicular magnetic field and you can uh, register a whole voltage here right uh, other physicists carry on further investigations in a deeply way and they could realize that uh, how effect can appear in many versions i mean the first one realized in the 19th century was the classical version. Uh, in the 80s decades, physicists were able to understand that uh, the quantum, the Hall effect can has quantum aspects and further, it also can exhibit fractional aspects. Here, I am just showing for you the quantum Hall effect. When here you can see the this abbreviation does is a important quantity in condensed matter that is the dense of states this quantity here uh, gives for you the information how many electrons there exist in that or orbital okay and here is are some basic informations that uh, some of you may may know 
And uh, in this area, a good test, test book for the beginners is this one. Now, uh, let me tell you about the birth of topological insulators and mainly the ARPS results. ARPS is the abbreviation for the angle photo angle resolved angle resolved photo emission spectroscopy right in condensed matter theory this is the most famous technique technique to directly measure the electronic distribution and uh, when arps probes some interesting experimental results you must try to pay attention in what arps is saying to you in this figure here you are seeing the experimental realization of this theoretical cartoon here. As I told you, these green lines are the characterization of a topological insulator. And here, as you can see in this graph, let me show you, let me advise you that here we are in the first Brillouin zoom. This is an important concept in condensed matter. Here, K is the momentum of the crystal in the Y direction. It is measured in the inverse of an angstrom. And here you have the energy in EV, right? And here you can see that you have that line crossing the two bands, the gap here. Here, between this line and this another line, you have a gap for a ordinary insulator, but the material here exhibits the properties of a topological insulator. And because of that, the ARPS techniques saw these two lines, which is called surface band. And for you understand these two, these letters here, it indicates the principal lines in the first Brillouin zoom, it, they are called the high symmetry line. And here is just a cartoon to show you that the electrons in these topological insulators are described by the Dirac equation, okay? Here is the usual electronic spectrum of the Dirac particles. And here is just to show you how the electrons in the surface of the materials tend to behave. Okay. So after that, now I, I'm, I am moving to the experimental motivations on magnetic topological insulators, which, which is the main material that we are investigating. Okay. These two results here, the first one is the experimental characterization of the axionic charge density wave. And here is a cartoon of the material who exhibit this property, which exhibit this property. Let, let me tell you something about its crystalline structure and this cartoons here, just for you realize the physics that I am presenting for you. Look, these three spheres here. These two atoms are selenium, and this red sphere denotes the bismuth and iron. Iron is a kind of atom that exhibits magnetic properties. And as you can see here, depending on the layer that you observe, in one of them, these pins, which is denoted by this black arrow, in this, air, in this layer here, all spins point in the up direction plus Z axis. And this another layer, these pins point down. I mean, in the minus Z axis, right? Because of the doping of this material with iron, it exhibit, theoretically, it was predicted that it can exhibit magnetic properties in this topological insulator. But how it was the, the theory and what is new here? A, a, a group of Stanford said that the magnetic topological properties here are mediated by a particle called axon. And in this material, 
if you apply an electric field, you can control the magnetic properties. Whereas, if in this material you apply a magnetic field, you can control the electric polarization. In other words, in this material, with the electric field, you can move these pins while in the same material with the magnetic field you can switch on the charge degrees of freedom as you are as you are thinking oh this is new for me because all of you maybe all of you are used to think in this way electric field governs the electric properties while the magnetic fields dictate the magnetic properties but it was realized theoretically i must say that in this material due to the axon particle this new physics can occur and how can we understand this here you have a visualization of this process, right? As it is a topological insulator, as you have learned, in the bulk of the material, the current doesn't flow. But in the surface of this material, you can detect a electrical current. However, in this kind of materials, due to the presence of the iron and the strong magnetic tendency, these pins also play a role. Notice, observe that this current here, this pin point in this way, while in this another line here, in this green line, these pins point in the opposing sense of that right going on I, I i hope that seeing this picture here you can realize the importance of this green line here this is just to show that indeed we are investigating properties in a topological material because as i told you if this green line doesn't exist here we are talking about a bit insulator but if you are investigating and in your experimental measurements or in your theoretical calculations, you detect the presence of this green line, you are talking about a topological insulator. And if the spins is relevant in the description of the properties, you are investigating in the constant, in, you, you are working with a magnetic topological insulator, okay? So, in this line here, in this slide here, I will show you what theoretical physicists do. Try to understand this three-dimensional material. It is not an easy task. It's very, it, it's very hard. Physics in 3D, it's not easy. So, we try, we decompose, the 3D crystal, right? And try to understand what are the relevant aspects, what are the relevant properties that we must carry on in our calculations, in our modeling, okay? And here I show you the, the main letters that uh, the 2D version of the, the letters who construct this 3D perspective of this magnetic topological insulator. And uh, I brought this cartoon for you just to, to show that, uh, in contrast to the classical electrodynamics, some particle physicists have created this theory called axon electrodynamics, where they analyze the role played by this particle axon in this kind of electromagnetism. But if you ask me, Fabio, some experimental particle physicist has detected the part the axon particle the answer is no unfortunately 
uh, has passed many years and uh, so far no one have detected this action particle. And if you ask me, Fabio, how this idea of action was born in physics? Uh, this idea was born in physics in the context of quantum chromodynamics because inside the, the, the nucleus, they, the particle physics had some problems with the CP, called the CP problem. And uh, the guys in Stanford created this idea that there exists a particle called action that can solve this CP problem in the context of quantum electrodynamics. Okay, and so and uh, after that, many theoretical papers have appeared about the properties of actions, its consequences. But so far, no experimental evidence of it was addressed. And uh, here, I show you one recent results, one some some recent results that motivated our investigations in close connection with the, the paper published by the Japanese guys. Here is an experimental evidence that the action intermediated the electronic behavior in, the, in, in a kind of material, not precisely a magnetic topological insulator, but a kind of material where, uh, which is classified as a vial semi-metal, where the action changed the property of the charged density waves. Remember that in the beginning of my presentation, I showed this abbreviation in the phase diagram for you. And uh, in this graph here, uh, there are experimental evidence that action is the important one mechanism for understanding some properties that, that were measured in this material. So now I will, I will show you our results and let me deserve some, some moment just to clear, clearly explain for you what I, will, I, what I want to mean by these figures here. First, this phase diagram with theta equals zero is not new. It is published in this paper here by these two Japanese guys. This is a journal of the Japanese society, right? And in their investigations, they use this crystal here which is called the diamond lattice, and the electrons are here, right? Just one electron here, they considered. And here, for you who are not familiar with solid state physics, it's our lab. <laughs> this, is our, this is our lab. All the physics that we investigate, we do it in the first Brillouin zone. This is a very important concept in solid state physics. And this is the crystal in the real space, in our configuration of space. And this is the Fourier transform of it, which is called first Brillouin zone. And if we switch on the interactions of the electrons in this, in the electrons, in this first Brillouin zone, you will end up in this phase diagram here, where in this axis here, you have the Hubbard interaction. It, denotes the interaction of one electron with another electron try to occupy try to occupy the same side and this v is the extended one it switch on the change in the charge degrees of freedom right and as you can see here when you have low values of u together with low values of v we are in the normal insulator i mean the normal electric insulator that we see every day. But when you switch on, when you tune the Hubert interaction for a fixed value of V, you can get in in the axionic spin dense wave phase. This was the great news of these papers, of these Jap Japanese guys. And they were able to show that the theta term the dynamical action, which is symbolized by this theta term, governs the properties of this phase. But 
in their paper, they thought this year that the charge density spin density waves uh, wasn't influenced by topological properties. And uh, our work will be here. We think and we are, and our results suggest that indeed the topological properties also influence the charge density spin density waves because we are supported by that theoretical result, that experimental evidence, right? And uh, in the next slide, I'm going to show to you some aspects of the Hubbard model. No, excuse me. First, yeah. Let me talk about a little, a little bit about the Hubbard model right uh, which was realized by john huber and in its simplest form it has just, just two terms this is the hopping term right which is analogous to the kinetic energy and this another one which is the interaction term this use the huber repulsion it may it may may be repulsive or attractive. If it is repulsive, you can get in, in the antiferromagnetic phase. If it is attractive, you can get in a superconductivity phase, superconducting phase. Let me, in this cartoon, try to share with you the qualitative physics of these two terms. These terms parameterize the kinetic energy. This T is the hopping parameter. It says that you need this amplitude T for an electron in this side, jump to this another side, right? This is which we call kinetic energy. While this Hubbard repulsion is the energy cost that we must pay to put two electrons in the same side with opposite spins. So, an immediate consequence is that if you is so big, is so large, you can't put two electrons at the same side, right? In this kind of regime, we say that we have just one electron per side, which is, which is the so-called health feeling, right? Health feeling means that you have just one electron per side. And this is important because this will end up in very in diverse in diverse phases. This another term which is new, Hubbard doesn't realize it, this term, right? And uh, it is it takes it takes place in the dissidents of the Hubbard model. And there is called extended interaction. And as you can see here in this notation, this N is the number occupation. This V will tune the interactions between electrons in different sites. Notice that this U here switch the interaction between the electrons at the same site J, while V tunes the interaction between the electron in different sites, right? As you can see in this little cartoon, okay? And here are one of, are two of my favorite test books on Hubbard model. Now, let me talk about two phases, two important phases of that phase diagram. The first one is the spin density waves. And how can we visualize a spin density wave? Theoretical physicists <laughs> think in this way. This arrow here denotes the spin. And when you apply a magnetic field in the classical context, I mean, in the ordinary context to in a material, you can process the spin and all the spins in different sites can form a wave. And this wave propagates for the whole crystal. 
and uh, can be experimentally measured this kind of phase right this is done in the spin sector and if you ask me fabio a similar physics can a similar physics occur in the chart sector the answer is yes yes if you apply a electric field or if you distort the layers you can distort the chart configurations look this hole here denotes the chart look that this in chain here this is this is sphere, this cycle, blue, and uh, denotes the atom, the sites, the batteries. If it, if it is all configuration uniform, you can have a uniform density, charge density, and the energy spectrum looks like this. But if you change the position of the atoms, right, you will perturb the charge density, and in this way, you will create a chart dense waves, which is a, another kind of phase. And uh, you will have this kind of energy spectrum here with this gap, right? Which is called a chart chart gap. Some someone will ask me something. No. Você tem mais 10 minutos, Fábio. Right. Para finalizar a apresentação. Right. So. Now, so far, I, I was only, I only discussed qualitative aspects, right? But now, <laughs> I let advise you that I will be a little bit more technical and I will use the techniques of field theory in condensed matter, right? This Two figures here. Now you have some physical idea in mind, and uh, in these two terms, you also I have, I just have discussed them some some minutes ago. This one you also have some physical idea. This term is new for you. This terms uh, describe the spin orbit interaction because when the electron is hoping from this blue cycle to this red cycle and in the presence of the electromagnetic field for, for instance the spins will see the the path the trajectory that it does right and this called this this kind of model is called full can mel hubbard model no uh, I, i should say extended extended full can mel hubbard model these three guys here, uh, these three guys are physicists who have many seminal, have many seminal papers in the field of topological insulators. Mainly this one here, this this two one here. So, going on, uh, I would like just to mention to you that, as I told in the beginning of my colloquium, of our colloquium, that trying to understand the this three D crystal once. It's hard, so we will use, uh, we will try to understand the behavior of the electron in this plane. This this numbers here, one one one, one one zero, uh, was an invention of a of a crystallographer called Miller. They are called Miller indexes, and they are very important in solid state physics, right? Mainly in 3D crystals. So. Electrons in this surface and electrons in this surface, we are not looking so far. We are looking for the electronic behavior at this surface, right? Our theory is for the electrons at this surface. So here that I showed you the last aspects of our model, but this crystal is immersed in a electromagnetic field. So when we apply a electric field here, it will govern the magnetic properties. While when we apply a magnetic field here, uh, it will govern the electric properties. It will move the charts here, and the electric field will process the spins here, right? As I told you in some point, 
this is called uh, the magnetoelectric effect, right? Here, it's, it, here we are talking about its topological version. If you write a action for it, it will have, it will has this form. And for those of you who are familiar with classical electrodynamics in, in its covariant form, this term is in a is a Lorentz invariant. And uh, symmetry considerations will show you that if you uh, do t goes to minus t, e doesn't change its sign. While b, which is a pseudo vector, will change its sign. So the theta, theta, which is the symbol used to describe the dynamical action, uh, must be a pseudo vector. So pseudo scalar, excuse me. It must be a pseudo scalar. And uh, you will have that it changes its sign by symmetry analysis. And uh, if you apply a functional derivative here with respect to B, to E, you get this kind of polarization, which is connected with the magnetic field. Notice the presence of the theta term here, while if you do a functional derivative of the action with respect to B, you will find that the magnetization is directly connected with the electric field. Also notice the presence of the action here, right? But if you use quantum mechanical arguments, you can write the theta terms in this form with where A is the vector potential, but we here use the language of Bloch function. Okay, but in this form, you can't, it, it's not so clear that uh, the parameters of the extended Hubbard model are inside these symbols here. If you do many pages of calculations, you can end up in expression that is very useful for trace the physical aspects of our modeling. In doing so, we describe the Dirac quasi particles by this effective action here, right? I will not uh, spend much time in the technical details of its form, but I will tell you that in standard, using the standard techniques, we also derive the same results that the Japanese researchers, and we end up in a similar expression, right? for the theta term, right, right now, in terms of the Hubert interaction and the extended interaction. This means that tuning these both parameters, you can move from the normal insulator phase, which is described by this action here, to the axionic spin density wave phase, which is described by this action here. These both forms are, are written in a covariant, are manifestly covariantly, right? Here we are using the used uh, electromagnetic -mag -mag tensor, F min E, right? And uh, here is one of our clean results, which is actually the same of the Japanese guys, which shows that the a variation of the dynamical action is directly connected with the magnetization, which is the standard order parameter for the spin dense waves, right? Now, I left you, I left you all with our conclusions. And just let me mention that one of our immediate perspective is to, is to perform a benchmark of our analytical results with some related compounds, uh, in numerical investigations performed by these researchers in Rutgers University, right? Our, we have drawn some graphs and uh, they look like the same, but we must do a careful analytic analysis of some part of our calculations and indeed carry on our investigations to explicitly exhibit that the theta term is also present in the charge density spin, charge density wave phase, right? So, thank you for your attention. Okay, Fabio. É, agradecemos aí a, a sua apresentação.